What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon and the channel is 540 Flips. I am going to try to make this video a lot quicker than I've done on my previous takes. Um, and I'm also, I'm going to say right up front, I want to talk about the eBay update. I want to talk about the change in fees, the increase in fees. There was some other aspects to the update um, that might interest people. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to say Thank you to everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Today is Wednesday. Uh, to the folks that have watched my previous two videos, I really appreciate it. Uh, really, really thanks to the people that said, um, hey, you asked for a comment saying hello, so they left one. Please just leave a comment even if it is hello. Uh, I will say it helps the channel, it helps the video, but I do YouTube because as you know, if you resell, um, adjusting from a full-time job where you're around people, you're around coworkers, and then going, you know, full-time. I've been full-time two years now, over two years, but the first year I was only dealing in sports cards, and I had a lot of people in that community that I had known and I, you know, talked to and stuff like that. I still talk to many of those people, but in reselling, this allows me to kind of share thoughts, opinions, talk about things, share pickups, share sales, but also more importantly, meet people, meet new people, uh, meet folks that I consider friends, but also people that I would just, you know, y'all are coworkers in a sense too. Even though we run our own individual small businesses and we do things different ways and we, you know, maybe sell on different platforms, we're kind of doing the same thing. Again, maybe in different ways, but we're kind of all in the same business together. And, you know, it's nice to just have people to talk to that are like-minded. Even if you don't do YouTube, um, if you resell, or even if you just enjoy the content and have a perspective on it, it's nice to hear. So I always encourage you. That's why I like to respond because this is an interaction. And uh, this allows me to step away from the computer a minute, you know, decompress my brain, get some thoughts out into the airwaves, share with you guys, have a good discussion, and meet new folks, whether it's virtually or if we ever come across each other's paths in person. Um, it's just nice to have that, that communication. So let's get into the update. And I'm going to give... I'm going to go mathematical. And math was not my favorite subject in school, but I'm trying to look at the positive picture, if that makes sense. Like, I never want to say when we're in a business to make as much money as possible, that paying more is a good thing. But I want to kind of just break the numbers down because I was having some discussions with some folks in sports cards and sports card people are finicky. In fact, you could list a card for a dollar and you'll get a offer if you have offers available for 85 cents like if they can penny pinch any possible way they will and it's all you know oh i need a deal or like comps this comps that it's much different when you get into actual you know miscellaneous reselling stuff and i'm sure other collectible markets are the same but i'm specifically speaking on cards but the update came out, people seen the increase in fees, and oh my lord, it was like eBay's ending, everything is crumbling. And so I wanted to talk about it. And so if you haven't heard, uh, there was an update that talked about how, well, first of all, I'll go into the easy thing. Uh, drafts are now going to be 75 days from the time it is edited, before you created a draft and you had 75 days from the day it was created, before it would expire. Now they're saying that if you go in and edit a draft during its 75 day period, it will extend to another 75 days. It's 75 days from the last update or edit done to a draft. So that's something that could help folks out. Uh, there was some other little things in there talking about how you can create sales right from the uh, dashboard and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, they, they're working on some updates. It's nice to see that they're trying some things, um, whether it's good, bad or indifferent. It's to be determined. Um, but anyway, 
one thing that's always going to catch people's minds is there was an announcement of changing fees. And what they've done is if you have a basic store and above, you will now in most categories, and I want to preface most categories, it's not every category. Um, you got to go look at the fee charts, but most categories, it says went from 12% to 12.35%. So a 0.35% increase. And there's another caveat, the 30 cent like insertion fee, uh, per sale fee, whatever. They changed the naming of it, um, you know, time to time. And I think in this one, it was like per sale fee is what it was was named as. But that is now $10 or more. It's 40 cents per but anything $10 or, or under $10 is going to retain at the 30 cent rate. So I wanted to do some math and just see how big of a, how big of a change is this? And I'm going to go with some round numbers that I think most people, if you're full time, um, it's kind of, maybe you're not hitting this number. Maybe you're exceeding this number, but it's, I think, a good baseline number, and it also keeps things in a round sense to follow along. So I figured up if you are a $100,000 a year seller at 2,500 sales, that's going to give you a $40 average sale price, so $40 ASP. The new percentage, which is 12.35%, would mean you have $35.06 after the fee and then deduct the 40 cent per sale fee is going to leave you with $34.66. Now, I took it a step further for clarity and for realism and I figured up on 2,500 sales divided by 12 months for the year it comes out to 208.33 sales average per month. And then I broke that down. And what I am calculating on is a $60 store subscription level. And I know most people aren't using that level, but if you are a volume seller, it is potential that you are paying the $59.99 store subscription level. So I just went ahead with that. Yours could be cheaper but I went with a higher number just, just for the sake of this. But that broke down to 29 cents per transaction for your store fee to cover the $60 a month. So that leaves you, after those fees, $34.37. Now, I get there is, um, you know, if you're promoting and that sort of thing, you have to fig figure that in there, but I can't, you know, I can't realistically say what people are promoting at. So I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to get in. Plus promotions are optional. You know, some, some people do, some people don't. I'm not going to get into that argument. I'm not going to say who's doing it at what rate. I'm just going with the fees that you're definitely going to be charged. And that comes to 3437. So if you take that and subtract it from the 3437 from your $40, and then multiply that by 2,500 sales throughout the year, it comes to you will have $14,075 in fees across for the year. Now, what does that look like pre-change? Because that's what I wanted to discuss. Is this change heavily significant? Is it crushing our hopes and dreams of reselling on eBay? Well, I went back and did the math from the 12% rate and then the 30 cent transaction fee, and it come to 3461 per per sale um, after fees. So there was a complete difference of 24 cents per sale based upon these average numbers and the new fee structure. So, you know, you had 10 cent increase right away with the the 30 cents going to 40 cents that's 10 cents right away so if you're looking at the 0.35 percent increase that's accounting for a pro you know for 14 cents and that would put you at thirteen thousand four hundred and seventy five dollars yearly 
So it was an increase of $600 now that, you know, based on $100,000 a year, 2,500 sales, $40 ASP, you would have an increase of $600 in fees selling on eBay at those numbers. So that's 50 bucks a month. I mean, if you really want to go with those numbers, you could just say, well, you can cut it down a lot by just selling 12 more items throughout the year. Because if you sold one additional $40 item per month, that you know knocks out a huge amount of the change. You could say, well, I'm gonna just add a quarter to the price of my item. You know, there, there's other there, there's a lot of little quirks that can make this sound a lot better <laughs> than it is. Um, I personally, and again, I'm new. Maybe I'm just trying to see the rainbow side of things. It could have been worse. I mean, they could have upped it a lot more. eBay offers us a lot. I, I know a lot of people talk so badly about them, and I guess I'm trying to be the object of positivity here, but they give us the seller hub that has tons and tons and tons of information. They give us our performance numbers. They give us like all of the metrics for our traffic and analytics that we can use to help boost our business. They give us the ability to just throw our whole store on sale. They give us the ability, you know, to make offers and sending offers really simple. Um, they have the authenticity guarantee on items such as sports cards or, you know, shoes and bags and jewelry and watches, all these other things like that has a buyer element of protection as well as a seller element of protection. They have the plain white envelope for stamps and trading cards and things like that to where, you know, people talk so badly. Oh, it's a terrible system, blah, blah, blah. But what they forget to always mention is if the item doesn't update the tracking and a buyer happens to say, hey, I didn't get my card or I didn't get my stamp and they want you to refund it, eBay literally says, hey, you know, we recommend you just giving them the refund and then requesting to us to reimburse you. And they will reimburse you if they've seen you've given the refund. Like there is a lot of protections that eBay gives to us, both as sellers and as buyers. But we hear so much about how the, the sellers aren't protected. I hear people talk about getting scammed all the time. There was comments in my last video that, you know, th there was a comment of being on YouTube, you know, kind of puts a target on your back. And I guess to an extent that is, but I responded with, if there's a scammer out there, they're going to be a scammer whether or not you're on YouTube or not. They're going to find the item, they're going to find a store, whatever. The I've had people attempt to scam me on chargebacks of buying sports cards in excess of $1,000. And eBay was with me 100% of the way. You know, their hands were tied as far as decisions. We did have to wait on the bank's decision, but they still were on my side and covered, you know, instead of me losing thousands of dollars. So as much negative as spewed out there, there are many cases that they are very, very good. Now, let's talk about your options because, hey, there is other platforms out there. Um, I don't know how well you'll sell on them. I don't know if you'll be capable of selling 2,500 items for $100,000. I know some people do very well on other platforms. I am not going to sit here and say yay or nay on that because that's not my experience. Um, from you know, But I also can't say it's not possible because really I just haven't put forth that, uh, that movement into other platforms. But I was looking up some fees, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. You can correct me below. It's okay. Um, but I looked up, and it said Poshmark is 20%, a 20% flat fee. And so if you think about that, $40 an item, um, you take out the 20% fee, you're going to be at $32 per sale um, after your fees, and you're going to pay $20,000 on a hundred thousand in sales at 20 percent, you're going to pay twenty thousand dollars for the year in fees macari i found a number of 12.9 percent plus a 50 cent per sale fee kind of like the ebay 40 cent one that's now um, that would leave you with 34 dollars and 34 cents per sale if you do all the math on that you know 40 minus 34 34 times that by 2500 it would mean you would pay $14,150 in fees. 
And then I even included whatnot. And you know, you have to keep in mind 2,500 items sold, that might be easy on whatnot, but getting $40, this like the same dollar for dollar eBay to whatnot, that's not gonna be easy. So keep that in mind for sure. Um, but whatnot has, what I found was 10.9%, and, and this is like an 8.9, I, I added them together. So whatnot is actually eight plus 2.9% plus 30 cents in fees. Mercari is 10 plus 2.9% plus 50 cents in fees. So when I'm saying like 12.9%, I want y'all to know it's like, it is broken down when you look at the fee charts, but I'm combining the total. So whatnot actually combines from what I seen was 10.9% plus 30 cents transaction for each transaction. Uh, that would give you $35 and 34 cents per sale. And then your fee total for 2,500 sales um across you know across all of that uh at forty dollars an item would be eleven thousand six hundred and fifty dollars in fees so where does that stack up well poshmark you would pay five thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars more than ebay even with the fee increase ebay imposed mercari would be seventy five dollars more because um i remember i said mercari is 14150 and ebay would be fourteen thousand and seventy five dollars so 75 dollars for mercari and that's including with you paying for your ebay store remember that because people you know they say well mercari doesn't charge you a store i factored your 29 cents per transaction or per item to end up paying that 60 dollars a month and that's a 60 dollars store level so keep that in mind what not I have at $11,650 in fees and whatnot would actually be $2,425 cheaper. Now, remember though, that's on $2,500 2, items. So $2,425, you gotta make at least like 39 bucks an item across all 2,500 items to make it really even equal. And I don't know that without a large social media platform, without a lot of followers on your whatnot show, that you would be able to, you know, be dollar for dollar on 2,500 sales across the year. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, it doesn't really feel like, I mean, yes, $50 a month, that's kind of hefty, but really, I mean, it, it could have went up more and keep in mind that some of these other platforms i don't know if they're going to do any increases i mean we are in february they might roll out you know uh fee increases as well and then it would change all of the numbers around but it was really interesting talking to my sport card buddies and they're like oh you know if ebay keeps up and they're squeezing out all of the margins it's not even going to be worth it and i'm just like dude it's it's like cents it's not dollars that it's, it's creating, it's cents. And if you can't, you know, survive with a couple extra cents, 24 cents extra now on this new fee compared to what it was before, there is definitely something wrong. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say, but that's all I got for you guys. I wanted to share this. Hope that all made sense. Um, I wanted to break it down. I know my numbers videos and when I'm putting thought into things, they don't do the greatest but I thought it would be interesting to share that. Again, I know spending money or costing us more isn't the greatest thing in the world. It's hard to actually even make it sound positive, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna freak out over this. I, I am blessed to be able to, to sell on eBay, make the money I have been able to make and provide for my family. And you know, I, I've said, this is actually, I've, I'm in a better financial situation than I was when I was working full time, which is just awesome. And so anyway, hope you guys are doing well. Hit the subscribe, like, and be sure to comment below with your thoughts and I will catch you in the next one.